Hey, what's up, everybody? Retro Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, we're going to dive into this Bodicera 37 USB flash drive here. This is a plug-and-play gaming setup with over 43,000 retro video games ready to be played by simply connecting this USB flash drive to your PC. So I actually already unboxed this accidentally, not realizing what I was opening, but I have all the contents right here in front of me. So first and foremost, you get this 128 gigabyte flash drive right here connects into a USB port on your PC, and you can boot into this rather than booting into just like your regular hard drive that's installed within your PC. And it's again, 128 gigabytes and it advertises over 43,000 retro video games. So I am stoked to dive in and see what this actually offers. Now it does come with this little keychain attachment here, which you can easily thread into the little hole on the USB flash drive just to make it a little bit more uh, portable. Obviously it also makes it so you're not going to be as prone to losing it, I think. And it also comes with this Hyperbase Bodicera 37 USB flash drive user manual. And what this does is it actually tells you exactly how you can boot directly into this USB flash drive on your PC. But I will say this, if you're familiar with booting into an SSD or an external hard drive, it's going to be very much the same process for the most part. So let's fire up my gaming PC. We're going to dive right into this today. And I'm going to first tour you guys through exactly what I experience as I experience it. We'll go through each of the collections, see what it has to offer, and then we'll dive into some games and we will test out the performance of this USB flash drive. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, so here we are inside of our USB plug and play flash drive ready to go on Bodicera 37. And I will say this, I've already set up a Bluetooth gamepad controller on here. Obviously you need to make sure that the PC you connect this to has Bluetooth capabilities, but seems to be navigating just fine on here so far. We'll obviously be jumping into a um, bunch of different gameplay demos on here shortly and we'll test it out further there, but seems to be great. So all games list, 43,254 games massive game count on here and what we're going to be looking for is duplicates on here just to make sure that the numbers aren't insanely padded uh we're bound to find some duplicates but hopefully we're not going to find massive amounts of duplicates because forty-three thousand games is massive especially when considering that this is a 128 gigabyte flash drive so now i'm not expecting there to be a whole lot of bells and whistles in terms of the uh, theme throughout here. This is one of the most basic themes. In fact, this is the stock theme that you get with Bodicera when you download Bodicera fresh. So uh, I'm not expecting video previews, but let's jump into all games here and just kind of see this is going to be every single title on this setup in alphabetical order. So we can gauge, you know, exactly what we're getting ourselves into in terms of the layout. So I'm noticing that we have text lifts, obviously on the left hand side, you have the title name, followed by the collection it belongs to. And then we also have either cover art or box art on the right hand side, along with the description of that title. So you can see how it's laid out in here. And I did see one at the top that didn't have any box art. That's to be expected, especially with uh, usually foreign releases. Sometimes you won't have everything scraped, but all in all, it seems to be laid out pretty nicely here. Um, Oh, there was a duplicate there. So we'll be on the lookout for duplicates. And I suspect I know what, why that is but we'll uh, tour through everything and we'll see if I'm correct or not. But nice layout, pretty well put together. Now, favorites collection over here is going to be a custom collection. You set up yourself when you get this. You can add literally all your favorite games into this for easy access. All you'd have to do is boot this up, jump into favorites, select your favorite title, and you'd be off to the races. Uh, so over here we have Amstrad CPC, 2,917 games. We'll take a quick peek inside here bunch of 007 games if you love classic 007 this is probably a collection you want to dive into and enjoy really nice layout in here and you're going to see pretty much the exact same layout throughout all of these collections so i'm not going to jump into each one i want to kind of jump through this and get the game count for each collection so amstrad gx 4025 games apple 2 over here with 473 games apple 2 gs with 148 games over here we have MAME. This is going to be your classic arcade collection. We'll jump in here, 1908, so 1,908 games. And we'll go through here because I want to just kind of glance at everything and see if I'm noticing any duplicates in here. And we'll dive a little bit more in depth on that shortly. But looks at first glance to be 
very well put together. Some of these games are absolutely amazing. One of my favorite collections, of course, is Classic Arcade or MAME. So I'll definitely be jumping back over here to test things out in the demo portion of this video. And one thing I noticed right here, this is one of my favorite light gun games. But you can see on the left-hand side, it says Alien 3 The Gun, then World in parentheses. And then next to that, we have a little revolver or pistol as an icon. And that just indicates to us just as we're scrolling through here, that that's a light gun game. And I like that because given the fact that this is Bodicera 37, we should be plug and play ready to go with Sindin light guns and all our mainstream light gun uh, controllers. So I'll definitely test that out as well for you guys just to verify that those are plug and play and that the experience is good. But looks to be a great selection so far. Let's jump out. Atari 2600 over here, 594 games. Atari 800, 2,670 games. Atari 5295 games. Atari ST, 854 games. Atari 7865 games. Atari Lynx, 82 games. We've got Jaguar over here as well with 67 games. Sufami Turbo, 1,964 games. And we'll kind of scroll through here now. One thing I'll say to you guys is you're probably going to have a lot of crossover over here with Super Nintendo. And you can see that right over here on the right hand side with the scraped data that we have the Super Nintendo cover over here. So we're probably going to have some duplicates across these collections. But yeah, like this one, I guarantee you both of these titles are also found in um, Super Nintendo's collection, unless maybe there's not a Super Nintendo collection, but we'll keep an eye on that. And our total count here was 1,964. So moving on, we have Wonderswan here with 114 games, Wonderswan Color with 91 games. These are pretty massive for these two collections. Uh, ColecoVision, 146 games. Take a quick little glance in here. Make sure everything looks good. It does. Also not seeing any obvious duplicates, so that's good. Commodore 64, wow, 6,550 games in here. Let's take a quick look. Oh, we're seeing some, well, this is definitely duplicate right here. Um, what else do we have? I just want to, I'm looking for obvious ones. Duplicate right there. Unless these are two-part games, but I don't believe that they are. I'm not super familiar with Commodore 64. Uh, well, I'm familiar with certain titles, not a wide range of titles. So I definitely feel like we have some duplicates in here. Not a ton. Fifth Gear, we seem to have two as well. Although they have different information there, so maybe they are different versions. Um, all right, so we may have some duplicates in here. We'll continue on. Commodore Amiga 500, 2,621 games. Over here we have CD TV, one game, just one game. To get you started at least, Amiga CD32, one game over here. Alien Breed, Tower Assault. I guess since we only have one, I'll show you guys what it is. So for CD TV, we have All Dogs Go to Heaven. I remember that movie. Over here we have Amiga CD32. We have Alien Breed, Tower Assault. I think we already went into that one. Odyssey 2, 113 games for Odyssey 2. Looks to be well put together in here. Intellivision, 149 games inside Intellivision. And there are some crossover titles here uh, between other collections. You can see, you know, a lot of these were actually in the last collection too. Uh, Vectrax, we have 46 games for Vectrax. Over here we have three games. And these are going to be, we have Descent. Duke Nukem 3D, and Jazz Jackrabbit. So I know Duke Nukem 3D, awesome game. We're going to see that for some other collections as well, I'm sure. MSX, 540 games. MSX2, 518 games. MSX2 uh, Plus, 9 games. Original Xbox, uh, 1 game. Let's see. Jet Set Radio Future. Great title. We'll definitely test this out since it's the only game in here for original Xbox. Make sure it performs properly at least. Um, and I assume the fact that we only have one game 
It's obviously due to the fact that we're dealing with a smaller capacity flash drive, but it does at least get you started with the collection. So you could add in more games, but you'd have to likely make room for it. Some collections uh, have ROMs that are much larger in size. They take up a lot more space. Xbox definitely takes up more space than you know PC Engine, for example, or Super Nintendo and uh, NES. All those games are really small. In fact, some games like that, your entire collection of thousands of games can equal the same amount of space as one later release title, like something for like a PS2 or PS3. Uh, so P uh, PC Engine over here, 298 games. Take a quick look in here. Afterburner 2, I noticed. That's an awesome title. Batman over here is a good one too. Good stuff. Super Graphics. We have five games for Super Graphics. You can see all of them listed right there. PCFX, one game. So again, it's a collection that gets you started at least. Game & Watch, 59 games. Cool to have, but I don't know many people that actually dive into this a whole lot. Um, these, I think, are different versions, so we won't call that necessarily a um, duplicate. Same thing down here, Donkey Kong versus the multi-screen Donkey Kong. But again, very cool to have. Not sure how many people will actually use that. Now, Nintendo Entertainment System, 1,879 games. We'll jump in here. This is going to be a popular collection, I'm sure, for a lot of people. And it looks like we have two afterburners, but they do have different box art for whatever that's worth. Uh, maybe different versions, I'm not sure, or it could just be a straight up duplicate. Uh, family computer disk system, 209 games. We have original Game Boy, 1,175 games. We have Super Nintendo, so we do have Super Nintendo. We were wondering that earlier, 2,269 games, and we'll jump in here because I remember that um, we had some titles that we wanted to take a look at right off the top there. Now, I'm not seeing any scraped information here for any of the games. Nothing at all. Okay. And we're seeing duplicates within here. Like right here, we have three different uh, versions of the Adams Family. And yes, they are different versions, but in the end, it is the same game. So... Um, we're seeing a lot of duplicates in here, and a lot of these are also in Sufami Turbo as well. So definitely, um, you know, adds to that larger number of total games. And just the fact that we don't have anything scraped in Super Nintendo kind of sucks in all honesty. I understand why, because we would have a lot of the same stuff because there are so many duplicates in here. Like, I mean, we're seeing different versions for a lot of titles here. Like, I mean... I would say probably more than half. There's multiple versions for the games. It's great if you want to have the Japanese version and the USA version, like down here. Two of the same game, but different, you know, releases. But, you know, not everybody is, I think most people don't want both versions. So definitely, um, you know, that number right there, 2269, is definitely not accurate. It's unfortunate. Uh, Super Nintendo MSU1 Media Enhancement, 13 games here. And um, let's see, great titles. We probably have those in the other collections too. Now we'll back out. We have Super Game Boy. And this is something that I want to pay close attention to because I've run into this issue with other plug and play setups. 1,046 games over here. Now I'm going to just skip ahead real quick because I want to compare this to Game Boy Color. There we go, 1,046 games. Just take a quick look at this one. Starts with 007, The World Is Not Enough. Last one down there is Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. Let's go over to Super Game Boy. Look at that. Exactly the same collection. Like title for title, exactly the same. Uh, is the scraped data the same too? It is. Exactly the same. So we can take the 43,000 number and take 1,046 right off of that to begin with because they're identical collections. So this is where you start seeing, you know, numbers get padded here because we have a duplicate of, you know, 1,046 games right off the bat. So we'll continue on. Over here we have 123 games. Virtual Boy we should have, yeah, about 33 games. That's accurate. Um, but we do see duplicates here for Galactic Pinball as well as Red Alarm. 
And that makes sense. I think there was supposed to be 31 games there, so that would account for the two additional. Now, Nintendo 64, 461 games. That's a good amount of games for N64. So we'll kind of scroll through here real quick. Um, I'll definitely be jumping in here for the demo portion of this video as well, just to make sure everything runs properly. But uh, we're not everything. I can't test all of these games out, but we'll jump into a handful of games. I'm very familiar with N64 games. That's definitely my childhood right here. So, I mean, great selection. We have all the... Um, all the cruising games here. I'm not seeing any duplicates, not, ob not obvious ones anyways. Donkey Kong 64, Diddy Kong Racing's on here. Uh, Dr. Mario 64, Excite Bike uh, 64, FIFA games are on here. My favorite game of all time right here. Not that I was a fan of this particular version, I was not, but um, the arcade version's my favorite. GoldenEye 007 is here. Great stuff. Hydro Thunder is an awesome title as well. Indiana Jones is, and the Infernal Machine was a great game too. And we're already this far. I saw King Griffey's uh, Slugfest was here. We've got the Mario games. All right, so that's that was my question. And I figured they would be here. They are, so that's awesome. All right, we're going to back out. Continuing on Game Boy Color, we can skip that because we already verified that it's the same as what we looked at before for Super Game Boy. Over here we have N64 DD, which is disk drive. We are only going to have a couple of games inside here, but it is cool to have. Nintendo GameCube, we've got one game. Okay, gets us started. 4x4 Evo 2, it's a good game. Uh, obviously wish there was more, but these games do take up a decent amount of space. So I understand on 128 gigabyte flash drive why there's only one. Uh, Game Boy Advance, 1,812 games on here. That seems to be a higher number than what we typically see. So I'm wondering why that is. Um, and we're going to, yeah, okay. So we have duplicates in here as well. Um yeah, kind of all over. And they're two-in-one games, too, so that kind of adds to That's why we're having it's a lot of two-in-one games. And then I'm sure we have the single releases for these two-in-one games, too. Yeah, a whole lot of two-in-one games. Three-pack games, too. Four, four games in one game pack, yeah. And then we're going to have, so like this one, for example, we're probably going to have all the individual titles down here as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's padded a little bit, but it's somewhat accurate, I suppose. But, yeah, like... Well, no, that one's different years. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's still definitely some duplicates in here. Um, not everything is going to be the Japanese releases like this one are going to have different box art, but still, I mean, they certainly have a lot of games. We'll back out. So take that into consideration. The true number is probably closer to like 1,400 on here. Pokemon Mini, 43 games in here. And... I'm not at all familiar with these in all honesty, but it does look like we have duplicates in here. It looks like three of the same one there, two of the same one here, uh, one, two, three, four of the same one there. And if all of these are the same, they might be different versions, but that's about what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the same there, potentially, allegedly we'll say. Um, all right, so Nintendo DS, seven games for DS. Was never a huge DS guy, um, especially with emulation. I did have a DS, but didn't have a lot of games for it. And I've never really been a fan with emulation. But for those that want to add to this, it's very easy to add to Nintendo DS. And they don't take up a lot of space either. So for Nintendo Wii over here, we have Super Mario All-Stars 25th Anniversary Edition and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. We'll back out. Um, Nintendo 3DS, one game, so at least it gets you started. Animal Crossing, Happy Home Designer. Um, over here, one game for this collection. All right, so we've got Power Slide. I do know that title. Now we have Bomberman. And this one says Mr. Boom here. Um, so it's an eight-player Bomberman clone. Okay, continue on. I'm not familiar with that. Now over here we have Open Beats of Rage, Open Boar for short, and this is a custom side-to-side beat-em-up style uh, collection. 
And there's some really great titles in here. Usually there's only one, but at least it gets you started with, you know, the collection existing on here so you could add more. I'm not actually familiar with Sonic X Battle, but there are some amazing open board games. I highly recommend exploring this collection. You'd have to add in your own games though, uh, because it only has the one. Now over here we have Prince of Persia. So it's kind of like a custom um, collection over here. Port of Prince of Persia. So these are look to be ports. Uh, Super Mario War. Fan-made game. So, yeah. All right. I don't know. Not sure why that's its own collection. Uh, Pie game, which is like a trivia game. Here we have a Thomas Wave, 26 games. I am a big fan of this collection. Um, Extreme Hunting is a good title. Also a light gun game. Ranger Mission. Um, that's a good title, too. I haven't played that in a long time. Sports Shooting's good, too. Um, as well as Sega Clay Challenge. So some good titles in here. We'll back out. SG-1000 from Sega, 99 games. Sega Master System, 442 games. Sega Mega Drive with 1,341 games. We'll take a glance through this one. So we're going to have foreign releases as well as U.S. releases in here. pretty good and there are some duplicates they are different versions you can see Japanese release this one's going to be the American release so you're going to have that here and there doesn't seem totally littered with duplicates like that or multi-region releases but definitely here and there all right continue on Sega Game Gear 406 games Sega Mega CD one game in here theme park sega saturn one game in here okay and it's uh i'm not even gonna try to say that definitely not one of the more popular ones i wish it was die hard arcade or something like that that i'm familiar with sega mega drive uh 32x so not complete we only have 21 games in here looks good though i mean it's great titles back out sega model 3 one game in here Sega Bass Fishing, good title. Remember playing that back in the day. Um, you can add a lot of great games to Sega Model 3, the Star Wars Arcade being my favorite. Sega Dreamcast over here, one game, Crazy Taxi. We'll test that out. Sega Naomi, 54 games for Sega Naomi. That's weird that that's here and not, you know, Dreamcast. And a lot of these games are also available for um, Sega Dreamcast as well, this being the arcade version. So we should have like uh, Ninja Assault's a good game. Um, Power Stone 1 and 2 is here. We should have The House of the Dead 2, uh, WWF Royal Rumble, Virtual or uh, Virtual NBA. Oh, there it is right there. Um, all right, cool. Yes, House of the Dead 2, I went right by it right here and WWF Royal Rumble, just two of my favorites, but awesome that they're included on, on here. Um, continuing on, Sharp 68,847 games. We have Sinclair with 70 games. Sinclair uh, ZX Spectrum with 6,161 games. And we are definitely seeing some duplicates in here. This kind of throws me off when there's a different, you know, picture on there. Um, but it could be a different version of the same game. I'm not familiar with it, but definitely at the very least we have one extra on here because you can see there's three 180s. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but I definitely want to go through and, you know, make sure that I highlight things that I notice on here. Again, right here, different information or different art. There's no description, but I imagine, again, duplicates. And we're seeing that here and there. Every every uh, couple of scrolls, we see some duplicates. So, um, And with 6,161 games, I mean, how could you not have some duplicates for that collection? Uh, Neo Geo over here, 151 games. Love this collection.
there we go. Yeah, a bunch of looks like they have all of them, which is great. Um, Neo Geo CD system, one game. So again, it gets you started at least with Wind Jammers. Neo Geo Pocket, 82 games. Neo Geo Pocket Color, 89 games. We have PlayStation with 130 games. PlayStation is a great collection to have. And we'll just kind of scroll through here real quick. Don't have WWF Smackdown though, one of my favorite games. Unless it's put in here differently. Point blank three. NBA Showtime, awesome game. So there are some good games in here. Do we have Tekkens in here? I don't know if I noticed the Tekken games. So S, T, I guess not. Yeah, because there's only, what, three T titles in here? All right, that kind of sucks. Um, yeah, I, don't, I can't think of anywhere else it would be if it's not there. Now, the wrestling games, WWF SmackDown, could be under, I'm trying to remember what the um, Japanese release was. It was labeled differently. I think it was like pro wrestling something. I don't see that in here, though. All right, so I'll assume that it's not in here. But 130 games still has a decent amount of titles. Now, PS2, one game here. It's Burnout 3 Takedown. We'll check that out. PSP, one game for PSP. Super Collapse 3. Uh, PS3, okay. One game here, and these take up a massive amount of space. Afro Samurai, familiar with that title. It's a good game. We'll check that out. Supervision 66 games. Looks good. And we're back to where we started. So let's dive into some games and make sure that they run properly.
could anyone do this? Alright guys, so we just jumped out of Bodicera 37 on this plug and play USB flash drive and I have to say in the end, it does exactly what we expect it to do. It's a reliable USB flash drive, it's easy to connect to your PC, just simply plug it into a USB port. I do recommend USB 3 ports over regular USB ports if possible. And we do have to change the boot order on our PC. Very simple process though, it took me about 10 seconds to make that change before I was booting directly up into this USB flash drive. So let's talk about the performance of games on here. I chose to use a mini gaming PC for everything that you guys saw in the demo portion of this video, and I had a great experience in the end. No screen tearing, no lags, no delays, no audio issues or cutouts, nothing of the sort, just smooth gameplay across the board. If I was being super nitpicky, the only downside was I found N64 games to be very pixelated. The resolution quality wasn't great on those. Usually what I'll do is I'll move over to the Rice emulator for N64, that's the best emulator in my opinion. It is supported on Bodicera 37. However, with the ROM file types that were used for this build, unfortunately, they're not compatible with that emulator. So just wasn't able to get that maximized experience over there, but the games do run perfectly. There's no lags or delays on them, so that is a good thing. You can go into your settings and kick up the resolution a little bit, but you're not going to get it up to the maximum point, I think you're still gonna have some limitations there. So worth mentioning, but still in the end, a good experience. Now I do wanna talk about the game list here and the total number of games, because we talked about this quite a bit as we toured the entire setup originally in the start of this video. I showed you guys collection by collection exactly what the game list count or game count was for each collection. And we did find a lot of duplicate titles not only within each collection, but there were actually collections that were duplicated entirely. So the 43,000 plus game total on here is not accurate at all. Um, there's no beating around the bush. It's just the way that it is. We saw that Super Game Boy and Game Boy Color were the exact same collections, just you know, pieced up into two different collections. So it does double the total number of games on here, which is unfortunate. At least they work in the end but um, it is worth mentioning that there are a lot of extra games or duplicate games that attribute to that high number for the uh, total count on here. Now, we also found collections that had duplicate titles within there where we had like maybe a Japanese released version as well as USA released version. So there's different region releases. And um, you know some people want both versions, some people don't. I personally, don't really care for both versions because I know I'm never going to play both of them. So if you're into like collecting, you know, different types of ROMs, then this is definitely going to be in line with what you're looking for. That's just not me. I'm not looking for, you know, the Jap Japanese version of a game as well as the American version of a game. So there are a lot of duplicates in there. Some games even had multiple duplicates. I think we saw one that had like eight different versions of it. So you know, there's just a lot of, of situations where there are multiple versions of games on here. So it's worth mentioning. Is it a deal breaker? Not necessarily, but certainly worth mentioning that that 43,000, you know, total number of games on here just isn't accurate and shouldn't be viewed as a selling point on here, in my opinion. Now, let's talk about the fact that light guns are 100% compatible on here and they're plug and play. So this uses Bodicera 37, which you can use all your popular light guns on here. Just simply plug and play and they will, you know, automatically get you into games and you will have a great experience with them. So I jumped into Police Trainer in MAME as well as um, The House of the Dead 2 for Sega Naomi. I had a great experience with both using the Sindin light guns. So that is a major advantage for this particular setup. I think that's great that we have that ability on here. So in the end, would I recommend this setup? I would recommend this setup if you are looking for older games, if you're looking for, you know, just a massive amount of older stuff like Atari, there's a ton of Atari games on here, a ton of NES games on here, a ton of um, Apple II games on here. If that's what you're focusing on and that's what you want, then this is definitely a home run for you. If you're looking for a massive collection of PS3 games, Dreamcast games, GameCube games, PS2 games, 
then this is not going to have your back because there's only one game for each of those collections. It gets you started. You have a collection that exists, but you'd have to go in and manually add your own on here. And at the end of the day, it's 128 gigabyte flash drive. So you don't have a lot of space to accommodate those more sizable games like that. So just weigh out the pros and cons, see if it lines up with what you're looking for. If it does, the price point on here is great. Um, the reliability on here is great. And the experience is great as long as you have a PC that can handle the games that you want to dive into. Even for N64, there's a lot of games in that collection and they do run properly. So just weigh out the pros and cons, see if it lines up with what you're looking for. If it does, then it's definitely a great option for you. So let me know what you guys thought of this plug and play USB flash drive in the comments of this video. That is going to do it for today, though. If you enjoyed the content, please give me a thumbs up on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube as I try to further grow the channel. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. That's going to do it, though. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.